Hello everybody, this is Alon Paul, and welcome back to No Man's Sky. So, we're going to do something a little different today. This is our regular playthrough, but as you know, I've been complaining quite a bit about my Starship inventory, and having issues with not having enough technology slots, not having enough cargo space in order to get things done. Um, problem is, I really don't have a lot of units right now, nor do I have the Nanites capable of upgrading the ship to a higher level if I wanted to. So kind of at a loss as to what to do. The only thing I really would like to do and the best way to actually get more technology and more slots for your ship is to find or get augments. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. What this video is going to comprise of is some money making ideas in order to increase the amount of units that you have as well as uh, finding ways in order to get the things that you need in order to continue on with the game. So we're basically taking a pause from the main storyline, a pause from all the little sub stories to show you a little bit of how you can make a little bit of extra cash. First things first, one of the easiest ways to make cash early game is with a particular item called chlorine. Now you get chlorine from a number of different locations. You can get them on certain planets as far as items are concerned. Um, but one of the easiest ways, you can see I have two chlorine over here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that over. But one of the easiest ways to get it is from salt. You see it can be processed in a refiner to create chlorine. So we could harvest a ton of salt if we wanted to. We could find a planet with salt on it. We could go to, say, our discoveries um, and look for a planet, like for instance, this frozen planet has frost crystals, copper dioxide, and salt. We could go here and find salt deposits and start mining the salt deposits in order to create chlorine. That could take a while. There's another way you can do this. Now, I'm going to show you a little something. First of all, as you know, we've acquired certain pieces of technology in the process of going through the main mission line. So one of those pieces of technology we can produce is a medium refiner. Now, the brilliance of a medium refiner, see, we need five dihydrogen, and I should have plenty of hydrogen in order to get this. Okay. Is, let me go ahead and fix this. Now, I, I never understand why they have it always facing the wrong way. It upsets me. The best part about the medium and large refiners is that they don't require any fuel at all. There's no fuel input here. They run completely on their own. They're autonomous. So we can put the salt in here and in a minute and 22 it's a 2 to 1 ratio. We'll have 228. I'm going to lose one but I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and get this going and we'll show you what we have in mind. Chlorine is a very valuable commodity. As you can see the total value is 205 units each for each piece of chlorine. Now, what does that mean? Is that very expensive? Well, let's look at other things if we should. Uh, let's look at the Starship real quick because we have uh, particular items in here. Gold, 353 units each. That's pretty good if you can find gold. Again, you'd have to mine it. I can go up to the asteroid field and start blasting away and be spending hours trying to get, you know, a, a thousand gold if I want to. Uh, silver, 186 units. It's not as valuable as chlorine. And the same thing, I'd have to try to find deposits and mine it. Even magnetized ferrite is worth significantly less. Pugnium, significantly less. Tritium, very, very less. You see, these units are really not worth that much. Cobalt, even ionized cobalt is not worth as much anymore. See, these items are just not worth. Platinum is about your most expensive one at 505, but again, it's hard to come by. Now, certain other metals that you can acquire, like cadmium, uh, indium, indium, uh, especially activated indium, used to be the most expensive item in the game, as far as a mineral is concerned, that you could mine. But they have since uh, changed that with 4.0. So you don't make as much money, and anybody who has activated indium farms, unfortunately, can't make as much money as they used to, sadly. So what can we do with chlorine? Now, if we put chlorine back in here, we can put it back into salt again. It's a 2 to 1 ratio, a 1 to 2 ratio in this case. But if we combine it with oxygen, I'm just going to put in around the same amount. At a 1 to 6 and 2 to 6 ratio, so 3 parts turns into 6 parts chlorine. You can double your chlorine, actually triple, almost triple your chlorine and take quadruple, close to quadrupling. 
So why is that a big thing? Because the value increases. As you can see with just 800 of this, it's going to increase significantly. So this is an early money making scheme. Problem is you can no longer buy oxygen in trade terminals as, as of the 4.0 update. So you have to harvest oxygen. Now that can be a problem. Oxygen is used in a great many things. It's used in your animatic creation, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, or at least producing your warp cores. Uh, not the animator, that's true, not for the warp cores themselves, but the animator housing to make it. And you need 30 oxygen to make those. So until you can get um, the bigger warp cores, as far as the uh, warp hyper cores, which would require storm crystals, and you can get storm crystals, and as you can see, they're worth quite a bit. Even one is worth 200,000. If you can find a planet that has storm crystals on it, and you can start harvesting them like crazy, that is a very fast money-making scheme. So that might be the way to go here for us. Um, I mean, we could acquire copper, but you can see copper is really not worth much either. So we have to make some money. That's all there is to it. Let's check our medium refiner. As you can see, I've got 800, unit, 800 of these that work 164,000. That's pretty good. So we could keep going with this. I could turn this 900 into, as an example, if I used all the rest of my oxygen, I could turn it into another 800 more on top of how much I have in there. Um, but I don't want to use up all my oxygen because I'm going to kind of run low. So I'm going to hold off on this scheme for now. We'll put this in our exosuit and we're going to store that away. Medium refiners are the way to go until you can get yourself a portable refiner, pardon me, a portable refiner that you can have in your inventory here, which we don't have yet. I could go up and purchase it, but we will get it as a um, reward during the main storyline. So I don't really want to purchase it um, until you can get that. There's no reason to continue uh, doing this scheme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find a planet with some storm crystals on it and see if I can't get a little extra as far as that's concerned. Um, and I'm going to do that off camera. We're going to do that a lot in this episode. We're going to do some pausing. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do some pausing and I'm going to come back. Things like that. So best way to find storm crystals. Go into your catalog uh, discoveries menu. Look for a planet that has activated metals. Like this has copper. We want to try to find a planet that has activated copper or something similar. None of my planets here have any, as you can see. So I'll go to systems that I've already been to and looked at the planets there and see if I can find something. Now, this early game, there's a good chance I'm not going to find a planet this way. These are extreme planets, and they don't really want you to start hitting extreme planets early on. And in case you're wondering, no, I'm not narrating this. I am literally doing this real-time as we talk. Salvageable scrap is a good way to go, too, if you can find it. Same thing with uh, planets that have bones on them. So looking for planets that have bones is also a good way to find uh, extra, uh, excellent money-making abilities. Yep, see, didn't find anything there. That's the system we're in. We haven't looked at everything in this system yet. We've got three other planets, so we should really check that out. We haven't checked that out. We took a quick jump through there, jump through there, jump through there, and we haven't discovered any of the planets there. So I'm going to take a quick look at the planets over here. I'll come back uh, at this same screen to show you the three planets that I've discovered when we get here. And we'll see you in just a few minutes. So I've jumped into a system here, and I've discovered this particular planet here as activated copper, as you can see. High sentinel activity, so we should be okay. It shouldn't have any kind of problems with the sentinel activity. Uh, in other words, uh, we should be able to mine things without any problem. Uh, they shouldn't bother us, unless we're destroying things like plants or animals or something like that. Eh, how convenient is that? I found myself a wrecked crater. So I can go ahead and land there and use its landing pad so I don't have to use my own launch fuel. But an activated copper place means it's an extreme planet. Which I should get a message. So I'm going to land here. Now the thing I don't know about, and I will discover the creatures while I'm here. The thing I don't know about is whether it's going to be or have um, 
the right type of storms or storm crystals on the planet whatsoever. There's a flock of something over there. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. There's a creature over there, and I just can't see them. Oh, very cold night temperature. Isn't that interesting? The other way around. Okay, eh, four of six already. Okay, so sorry about the delay there. Um, so basically, I don't know whether this is going to be the right type of plan for this, but we'll see. It won't know until the storms actually kick in. Um, sometimes these give you technology, so it's not a bad idea to check out the logs. I'm not going to read through it all. We're just going to go ahead and blast through this real quick. Nope, nothing there. But as you know, with most of these freighters, you can acquire some materials that are going to be very expensive. We have a terrain manipulator. And there's our cargo container. And get away. Hmm. 250,000 units. How nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll go through these cargo pods real quick and we'll come back here in just a couple of moments. Okay, and we're back. So what we got here, I'm going to show you real quick in my inventory that we have, this is what we picked up. So, you know, 380, 350, $400,000 worth of uh, cash. I should say units worth of stuff. No big deal. Now, we went from 120 degrees below to a firestorm right now. So here we go. Extreme weather event. Let's take a look. So once this reaches maximum temperature, if there were storm crystals here, you'd see them flashing in the distance. We'd see little lightning bolts indicating that these were the ones we're looking for. We're not seeing that. So, and that was our underground creature. Go figure. So we have one more ground creature to discover while we're here for more nanites. But that's not the purpose of why I was here. Uh, why I was here, I should say. So the point being is that this does not appear to be the type of planet I'm looking for. So I'm going to try to discover the last creature, and I'm going to move on, and I'll come back here in your time in a few moments. And we're back for just a moment. So another way you could make some credits and actually get some storage augments is if you can find yourself, obviously, a tra crashed ship. Now, it has to be an unoccupied ship. So if you find a crashed one, quickly look at it through your visor. And if you can see the ship and see the value of the ship, it's a crashed ship that you can acquire. If it is not showing up in your visor, that means that there's someone hanging around here, an NPC, that is actually part of the crashed ship and he just needs your help. Leave it up to you if you want to help them, but usually they are very, um, um, they don't really appreciate the help. They take what they, they can get from you and then they just disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and go through here because in a lot of times you'll get something that you can, like for instance, the uh, installed ship tech, or you can search for cargo. If you go for the ship tech, you'll learn a new uh, blueprint. In this case, I'm, I've learned the phase beam. Yay, the most useless weapon on a ship. So I'm not too tickled about that. So I'm not too concerned about this. Um, we're going to go ahead and take what we have. We'll acquire the usual items from this particular crash ship, and we will turn it in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause here in just a second, and I'm going to pick up on the space station when we turn it in. 
the problem with doing this, and I'm going to say it more than once, I'm sure, is that you're not going to get as much as you think out of this. And the chances of you finding a crash ship all the time, pretty slim. I just happened to come across this by accident. I was uh, near a transmission tower to discover the ship. So I'm going to go ahead and acquire the ship, spend a very few units to claim it. As you can see, the launch thruster is already repaired. I just have to repair this with a hermetic seal and metal plating. I should be able to do that pretty qu pretty quickly and easily. I can also um, disassemble this for the spare parts. So we're going to go ahead and acquire this ship. I'm going to claim it, and then I'll be back in a few minutes. So we're back for a few moments. So um, we're going to go ahead and disassemble the ship now. Now, of course, in the ship, I've already disassembled the item that I needed. Everything's been repaired that I need to repair just to get the ship here. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this. And it's an A-class, so I should get something out of it. So we're going to claim scrap. It's only worth 1.8 mil, even though the ship was really worth 10. But because it's in such disrepair, you're not going to get everything you want out of it, plus your scrap. So we're going to claim the scrap. And it's going to tell us that we got a bunch of stuff. So the things we got are worth a pretty decent amount, okay? And you've got a couple of upgrades that you can use as well, if you wish. I'm going to turn them into the nanites. I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, we'll sell these things and get rid of them. So that's where we are with that. So we only one, made 1 1.8 million. So we have a good amount of units now. But again, not very easy to do. All right, we'll come back here in just a few. So we found ourselves another system that happens to have activated copper. So we're going to go ahead and try this planet out, and let's see what we can find as regards to the storm crystals themselves. Now, one thing I'm going to note for you, <clears throat> you can discover them from the air. Now, I'm sure maybe some of you have played a while. You know this. You can actually look at the ground, and you can actually see the storm crystals on the ground. It's easier to see them during the day, so I'm going to head to the uh, bright side of the planet for the time being. Hopefully this isn't a water world. It's kind of hard to tell from up here, and it already looks like there's a storm going on. So if you can head to the planet while there's a storm happening. Get in there real quick here. Yeah, it looks like there's a storm happening right now. That's why there's so much cloud cover. We'll have trouble seeing for a few moments, but you're looking for the flashes of light on the ground. See, there's a storm crystals right there. So it looks like we found a planet that we're looking for. You still have to be careful, so hopefully we have the right protection, but if not, we're going to be going through batteries and everything else under the sun rather quickly. Let's see. And all you have to do... Ah, wind event. That means tornadoes. That's okay. As long as your jetpack is fully charged. Okay. You should be all right. So there's a storm crystal right there. Let's head that direction. Oh, I've gotten caught in one. See? That's all. Just make sure your jetpack is charged so you don't take too much damage. And you'll be okay. So, ah. <laughs> That's actually a creature. <laughs> So we're going to run over here, and of course you can only harvest these during the event. And this event is probably just about over. Lightning is a good sign that you're on the right planet. Come on. Up, 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 up. And in this mode, you're going to take very little damage because you're in normal mode. And if you're fortunate, you'll run across an outcropping with a lot of crystals in it. Now, fortunately, I had already learned the uh, recipe for warp hypercores, so I can make my own now. There we go. There's a few more over here. Come on, run. Get your butt moving, buddy. It 
so I can make my own. That's all great and dandy, but you can hear that wind in the background. That's pretty cool. Give me credit for that. Ah, looks like there's only one. Oh, you stink. Now, if we're fortunate, these storms will last a little bit. Sorry, gonna need the sodium. Miles will grab it while we can. Uh, that is a really weird looking creature. I don't even want to get into it. I'll head that way. We're quite a distance away from our ship, but it's okay. We can call it in later when the storm is over. So just be prepared to do a lot of running around. And once this is all done, we'll go see how much we've made. Now, you're going to want to keep a few of these. And as you get further into the game, ugh, as you get further into the game, go ahead and save a few. I usually try to keep a stack on hand at all times so that as I get more and more ships, I can make more and more Piper Corps. And as soon as it says storm is clearing, you'll see the lightning bolts immediately vanish. So, that's done. These are some weird looking creatures, I tell you. Ten of them on this planet. So we could get some nice uh, nanites out of this. But let's see how much we made. Oh, uh, wind event's not over yet, apparently. Let it carry you up. Don't use your jetpack. Hopefully this event will be over soon. Having a little bit of fun with this. Oh, <laughs> up here with me. Fun with tornadoes. But the wind event would be over with. Uh, we got ammonia to charge myself up here. We're good. That's why I keep those things on me. That looks like the wind event is done. And we are low on oxygen. I'm going to go ahead and grab some while we're here. It's a high sentinel planet, so you got to be careful when you're doing stuff like that. Okay, where were we? Back to here. So, 2 million per stack. So we got 4 million. And I'll keep a couple in my own inventory for my ship. So I've made 4 million units just on those storm crystals alone. Now what we could do is we could find ourselves a nice place to um, set up a camp here, set up a base. And these storms will be... They're not completely infrequent... They're frequent enough that it's worth perhaps setting something... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, setting something up here. Now, the problem with... Uh, it's okay to have a base here, and I could sell them to this miner... Uh, miner, miner, miner... What's it called, folks? Miner settlement, right. We could sell them to the miner settlement, but the problem is as we sell them, the amount of money they're going to give give for them is going to keep decreasing. So hang on to them. I'll try to keep a good inventory open to stack them in, if you can. And that way, when you get a good amount of these units, you can go ahead and just start, you know, using them on a regular basis. So I'm going to set up a little camp base here. I'm going to go ahead and do this. This seems like it wouldn't be the best thing to do in the world, but what else is here? Let's take a quick look, and we'll see if we want to stay here and establish a base here that we can get other items from. So we have ammonia, so that's good for recharging my shield. Activated copper, but it's not really worth as much as people would see. Uh, seem. And finally, um, cobalt is the third item. Again, not really worth my time. Uh, and the fungal mold is here, so which we'll need it on a later date as regards to some of the uh, uh, missions that we'll have to do. So, that's a plant. Come on. 
Oh, you're just a plain annoying. I don't like you anymore. So anywho, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a little base here, and I'm going to probably get myself a transport terminal and everything like that, and we'll get this going here. So let me go ahead and get this moving along. We'll set up the base, and I'll come back here in just a couple moments. And we're back. So as you all know, I like to discover all the creatures on a planet, but I'm going to hold off on this one. Uh, I renamed my base the Storm Crystal Base, as you can see. I'm near this nice little uh, minor settlement if I wish to sell and buy things and get some things that I need in order to build uh, other uh, items. I've got a nice little structure here. I have a way to charge it. Um, in case I'm not getting much power from this or enough power from this to this battery, I've got a little biofuel reactor I can dump some stuff into to keep it charged. So that'll be good. A uh, little landing pad behind it. You can get either this one or you can get the other one. Either one is going to be fine as far as the landing pad is concerned. And of course, I got a teleporter and I've got a medium refiner. So I'm all set. One more rainstorm approaching. They seem to be very frequent. They seem to be happening every five to six to seven minutes or so. So I'm going to go do some more harvesting of some storm crystals. I did the last storm as well, and I ended up with another stack and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more storm crystals. Now, as you clear out the area, of course, you're going to have to go further and further afield. So be prepared for that. And it will repopulate again after about a week or two. So keep that in mind. You can't do this forever. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more storm crystals, and we'll be back. So hey folks, we're back. So as you can see, we're back at a space station here. So what ended up happening is I acquired a little more in the way of storm crystals. You see, I sold them all, and I went ahead and sold them to one of the ships that landed in this platform. Now what I did is I'm not in the same system anymore. I renamed my system Storm Crystal System so that I can go back there anytime I want. The resources are going to be harder to come by, as I said before. So as you you have to spread out further and further afield every time there's a storm. So I got enough to get about 10 extra million, so I'm about 34.4 million, and I'm looking for ships in this very interesting system. You'll notice on the left-hand side it says the economy is opulent. It's a commercial economy and opulent. That's what we're looking for, a three-star system, so that way that the ships that land here will be good ships. Now, the first um, phase of ships landing has already come and gone, but for some reason the second phase isn't kicking in. Sometimes it needs a boost. So what you may have to do sometimes is just jump in and out of your ship, get a restore point real quick, and then go ahead into your options and reload your restore point. And it takes a couple moments to reload, of course. And we'll look at the mesmerizing atlas symbol. Okay. Now, I don't know what kind of ships will land here. I see cargo ships and things like that. You want to go with the cheapest A-class and obviously S-class ships you can get, because you'll get the more possibility of getting a storage augmentation for your main starship out of those. Problem is, they don't always land. Also, they may not be as cheap as you think, but you're going to buy them and scrap them, is basically all you're going to be doing. So you'll get some money back out of them, but not as much as you would hope. So you're going to still have a depreciation of value every time you sell, and you're going to lose money over the time, over the, over the long run. And you might think to yourself, let me get an S-Class fighter that's worth 30 mil, but you're still not going to get as many as you wish out of that. So this is a C-Class worth 4 million, really not worth my time. The shuttles are going to be your cheapest, so this C-Class is going for 2 million, so keep an eye open for that. Fighters will be a little bit more expensive at 4 million there, and we should have a fourth one landing in this run. Now you could set up at a landing platform as well. There's the fourth one. You could set up a landing platform as well, and there'll be more ships landing there, if, especially if you land off the platform. But honestly, it's not worth it. So these are all C-class, oddly enough. <clears throat> I would expect at least one B-class to have landed, but no. But the turnaround should be quick. So one ship has already left. Let's wait on another one to come through. And once again, I'm having to mute my mic and clear my uh, throat, as it's still a little bit rough this morning. So hopefully we'll see the second phase of ships 
rolling through here in just a moment. Come on, guys. You can leave. There's only so much on that data pad. You too. There you go. Okay, you're out of here. There's no more Girl Scout cookies here. You can go. Come on. Oh, this one? No, I don't know. Here, there's the other one gone, and they gone. Okay, good. Now we're just going to see if we can wait for the second phase of ships to arrive. I'll pause for just a moment. So we're back again, and we're waiting for this phase to come in. We're actually in a different system. You can see it's a booming economy. This is the system I didn't really want to go to, but I went here anyway, because for some reason, a second round of ships was not appearing. Decent ship, A-class. It's a fighter worth 13 million, so that's going to use up a third of the amount of money that we have. A little stubby fighter. B-class at 6 million. I'm really not interested in looking at a B-class. Here's a C-class at 4. And here's our fourth ship, which happens to be a cargo ship. Shuttle, if you will. And is a C-class at 2 million. So we're going to try to look for more of a shuttle. I'd like to buy this real quick. I'm going to show you what happens when you get the A-class ships. So let's go ahead and buy this one anyway. We're going to offer to make an offer on the life form ship. Now, if you want to, you can go to the trade menu real quick just to make sure there's nothing in here you really need. Um, I can always use more phosphorus. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And chromatic metal is worth a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and grab it as well. And ammonia. I need all those. So you see, I didn't really use a whole lot of money up. So we're going to back out, and I'm going to make an offer on a ship. Pretty decent ship. Everything's fully fixed. I'm going to buy it. Do not exchange it. Make sure you have room in your inventory, your, sh your ship inventory, to exchange the ship. Um, another ship just landed. Just so want to double check it. It's also an A-class at 13. So I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So it looks like this system has ships coming and going on a regular basis. So we have the inventory space. We're going to go ahead and scrap it. See, we get 9 million back out of the 13 we spent. So we lost, we lost about 4 million. Which is why if you can go with the cheaper ships, it's better. So what did we get out of that? Let's take a look. We got a storage augmentation. So we're going to st stock that for now. We're going to sell our updates real quick. I purchased that at the last system. And this is something that is worth $9.3 so we're going to sell it. Now, there is a faster way to do it, and I'm going to not tell you how to do it just yet. We're going to sell these. We get a little bit of nanites out of it, which is a secondary thing that you're getting out of this as well. You got your ship back. If you have anything... Oh, what's that worth? It's a B-class. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So if you want to, you can take this update. You can update your ship right now, or you can store it in your starship real quick. I need to get rid of that anyway. I'm going to put this in my main starship. I think we're good on all other levels. Okay. Starship. 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 Okay, so we need to sell that. Best to sell it to someone who has a ship. Now, there's another ship coming in. Huh. Isn't that pretty? Nice solar ship worth six. Not bad. Pretty looking ship. Nobody else has landed, right? Oh, there he is. Fighter, B-class at eight million. So I'm not, not going to buy it, of course, but I'm going to go ahead and sell what I've got real quick to this guy. Make sure you choose the right item. Done that before. Compressed Indian scraps, okay? So I'm going to sell those, and I get my $9 million back. So, you see, we got $30 million as far as the sub is concerned. C-class at 2.5. A-class at 10. So now we got a little bit of a cheaper one as an A-class. Occasionally, you will get an S-class ship arriving. They're rare, but they do happen. So we're going to do the same thing again. Um, trade because I like to just double check. I don't really need any of these things right now. Let's go ahead and make a offer on a ship. Buy it for 10.5. And we're going to go back up here and sell it. Now, ship just left. Claim the scrap. 7.4 million. See? So we lost about 3 mil. Okay. So this is the proper way to 
get rid of ships and to make the the and to not cheat if you will at getting the money that you need stay away from the haulers by the way an a-class haul is worth 30 mil and that's a cheap one so what did we get out of this let's double check see we got the indium scraps we got those again we got these couple cheap things but you see i didn't get any storage augmentations so the chances of you getting one from an a-class ship are cheap are, are, are limited so i might grab this one again and go ahead and grab it and see what we can get i might get a storage augmentation out of it Let's uh, just make a straight offer on a ship real quick, and I'll buy it. Yeah, the ship's already gone. And you just hang around the station, and if you see that the phases of ships rolling through are, are, are declining, you can go ahead and do a autosave, and then reload. Okay, did we get one out of that one? Let's see. And we did not. See, so it's kind of a hit and miss with this. Maybe they've nerfed it a little bit. It's hard to say. But it's kind of worth it. So now that I've shown you the proper way to do this, let me go ahead and jump out of here. I'm going to sell what I've got for the most part. I'm going to sell most of what I've got to this guy here. B-class, not really worth my time. Just in case an S-class happened to land. No other ships coming in at the moment. Try to trade with the guys here rather than at a trading terminal, like I said, or else you get less value, less and less value for the items that you're trying to trade out. So I'm not going to sell my indium scraps this time. So atomic regulators, okay, we'll keep that. Okay, we have 11 million left, and that's it. Now we'll get, you know, another 11, 12 million out of that. But now we're going to show you the cheating method. This is, now one day, I don't know whether they will um, nerf this or not, but glitch builders love to use the latest and greatest in order to do things. So we're going to show you the cheating method now. Where are we going? Well, we can't place things down inside of a... Um, space station, so we're going to go to a planet real quick. love to find a building we can, because this is a cold planet, I'd love to find a building we can do this inside of. I'll take a quick peek. Alright. I'll give it five shots. One. I think we just passed over a plant. I'm trying to look at the same time. Two. Two. Three. Fine. The system should have a lot more here. Four. Nope. And five. Okay. So we're not finding anything. So let's just go ahead and land, and I'll show you how this works. Looks like a good enough spot. Okay, so we have portable refiners, right? We don't have any on us right now. Now, you've seen this on a great many videos. Professor Cynical is one of the ones I can think of. I'm going to do three of them. I'm going to put down a portable refiner. Now, what's one thing you can't refine? Don't put anything in your fuel inverter. For instance, these I'm going to put in there. We don't get any output from this, but we got four of them worth 12.4 million. Now, if I take and I put down two more refiners in the exact same spot, kind of glitch building, so to speak, okay, and then pick them up, we now have 12. We've tripled, tripled the amount of units that we have here. I'll do it one more time. So this is the cheating method of doing this. 12, 1, 2. Pick them up immediately. 
Now you can do a whole bunch of little refiners there and get way more. So now I've got 111 million. So yeah, you just learned a very uh, sketchy way of making money in this game. So up to you whether you want to do that or not. You can use other items here. Uh, my cat's decided to join me. Hello. Good to see you. And you can use other items. Like, for instance, you can do the same thing with the storage augmentations if you want. So you see that there's a very quick way to do all this. I can do it with cargo bulkheads. I can do it with the freighter upgrades. I can do it with anything I have in my inventory. So, you can see how powerful of a cheat that can be. So I'm just saying that there is ways to do it legitimately. If you want to do it legitimately, that's perfectly fine. Um, I have no reason to judge you one way or the other as far as to how you want to do it. Um, what I have done and my own method of doing things, this must be my own system. I probably could have landed on my own base at this point. Um, one thing I have done in the past is I will usually, when I start a new game, I'll do everything legit the whole way. Everything I do properly, like I'm doing in this particular save here. So you're going to see me do something and you're going to cringe when you see me do it. I know you will. There's the original four. Yep, I just blew 100 mil. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. I don't really need them and they're not really worth my time. I'm going to keep the one because I left one back in my base and it's nice to have one on board my person. So there we go. Um, so yes, I'm not going to cheat it. There's no reason to do so. You can do it with any item you want. But for the purposes of our game, we're going to go ahead and do this the old-fashioned way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video a little early. I'm going to just give you, so I give you a rough idea of how you can go ahead and get storage augmentations. That's probably the best and easiest way you can do it. Do it in a system that has, obviously, as you can see, a regular influx of ships landing at the space station. And try to get your storage augmentations that way. A lot of times the more expensive the ship, the more storage augmentations you'll get, but it also has to be a higher class. It has to be at least an A-class ship. Um, and the possibility of you getting an S-class, again, it diminishes, but every now and then you do get lucky, and an A-class, an a -class, uh, pardon me, an S-class will work. Something I have noticed is if you're familiar with exotic ships, the little uh, ball ships, as you, if you will, the exotics tend to land in almost every system now, but they're rare. See, that A-class is worth $9 million. And I have 11 right now. So I'm going to sell my Indium scraps to him, and I'm going to buy it. We'll do this one more time for the purposes of this video. Trade, sell. Let's get rid of my Indium scraps, which should be right there. $12 million. I'm going to make an offer on a ship. And buy it. Now, if you want, you could... Also, on that ship that you just acquired, you could start um, taking apart all the items on the ship in order to get more like wiring looms and other items from them. It's up to you if you want to do that. It decreases the value of the ship, though. Keep that in mind. So, 6.9 mil. We're going to claim the scrap. Salvage drones are out there. We're going to go ahead and get rid of our technology because it's A-class and I'm not really interested in that. Got three of them. That's pretty good. Up to 13 million nanites. 13,000 13, nanites. Did we get one? Yep, we got a storage augmentation. So, see? I'm doing good. And I'm going to put that in my current starship. And sell these off. So, that's my method for doing so. It's going to be a while. I'm going to upgrade my ship a little bit further, and then I'm going to call it. That's a neat little ship over there. It's a fault. Well, this is the hauler we're looking at. That's a fighter. It's going to worth a lot. Yeah, 43 million for an A-class fighter. And that's 11 million for that A-class. And that's a B-class solar. Interesting. So there's a possibility we could get an S-class landing soon, but I'm not going to stick around for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, any questions or comments, feel free to go ahead and drop them in there. I try to answer them as quickly as I can uh, and get to those comments when I can. If I'm at work or something like that, it may be a little while before I can answer you. So by all means, uh, it's been nice having you here. Hit that subscribe button, please, if you haven't already. And if you really like the video, go ahead and hit that like, because it does help us 
uh, people who are doing these videos uh, in regards to YouTube and uh, the anal analytics and everything like that involved. So we really appreciate all the time that you're able to spend today watching this video. Take care. Always uh, be kind to others when you can, especially. It's, there's always time to be kind to others, right? Kindness, never criticize it. And as I always say, always be truthful in all things that you do, especially to yourself, because that's where it starts. Thank you very much for watching.